Welcome to Ask Polly Tuesday, a show for brand marketers who want to learn how AI can grow their revenue and brand recognition. Our AI is named Polly, and she is the first AI in the world able to do probabilistic sampling on social media. That means you can now get statistically valid market research on your desktop in less than five minutes. It's as easy as a Google search. Each Tuesday, we'll look at a new marketing problem and how to solve it with data. The goal is to help you learn about AI and how it can help you grow your market. Welcome to Ask Polly Tuesday. On today's show, we're going to talk to our wonderful researcher, Marisol, about what to do when your product, your market, kind of disappears or changes drastically. What do you as a marketer do? How do you pivot? How do you get the information you need in order to pivot? So Marisol, today you're going to be leading the way. You've done some research on... So we just, uh, we use Polly to take a look at makeup trends in the United States and understand how the pandemic has affected it. So what are we looking at here, this first graph that you've got here? For yeah, the first graph here is our uh, makeup trends overall. So it's the baseline of makeup uh, throughout the pandemic. As you can see, it peaked really high in March of 2019 at around 30 million, and it's troughed two years later at less than half at 11 million. So makeup is really starting to see a downturn in the market. And why is that? I mean, I guess it's obvious, right? women are not going to the office anymore. So I don't look need to look as fabulous as I needed to look unless of course I'm doing podcasts. So we see it going down. How, what do we do from here if you're a marketer? So um, it's important to take a look at market segments. So we use Polly to take a look at different audiences that are within the makeup market. And I really want to highlight to you a couple of really interesting points that we found. So the first one is music lovers. Music lovers are starting to go out again and they're starting to go to concerts a lot more. But what we're finding and, and what we're finding is that they're looking for a really colorful look. So we also took a look at the travelers as travelers are starting to get back on planes. We want to better understand how frequent flyers are using makeup. And as you can see here, heavily favoring the natural look because of the masks use. They're really just looking for a fresh, easy look when they're traveling. And then finally, if we take a look at um, the LGBTQ community, um, we've seen in a lot of their conversations that there's really specific needs that they have. Like, for example, um, uh, trans folk and the need to cover up beards and skin sensitivities that some of their uh, medications can um, bring into play. So these specific needs are not necessarily being met by a lot of brands, but the brands that are recognizing this are doing quite well in this group. So you mean like when somebody goes into the store, for instance, and says, you know, do you have something that will help me cover up my beard because I'm transitioning? The makeup artist may or may not know what to recommend for that because they're more been trained on a typical, if you will, customer. Exactly, exactly. And so these brands are needing to pivot because of the fact that their main audience, which is professional women, are starting to move away from the need to use day-to-day -day makeup. Great. Now, what else did you look at? Oh, I see here you looked at different brands. And tell me a little bit about what's going on in this graph. Yeah. So um, we use Polly to take a look at some really popular makeup brands and to you know measure them up against some of these audiences. And what we found was that Chanel, Dior, and MAC specifically are really learning to cater to these groups and are kind of you know blazing the trail for specific markets. Whereas other popular um, brands such as NARS and Hourglass are kind of falling behind in the need to be marketing to these specific groups. Interesting. Now you, you looked at the different audiences, you know, teachers and lawyers and what the colors they prefer. I thought that was cool. I don't think we have time to go through it in this podcast. You had income and race. Um, but something else that you looked at was how the look between a colorful look and a more natural look changed over the course of the pandemic. 
Yeah, for sure. So as you can see here, uh, before the pandemic in uh, late 20 or early 2019, uh, the natural look was really um, in play and, you know, colors and the hydration aspect were not as prioritized within these groups. But as the pandemic hit and people were on Zoom and people were, you know, needing to really brighten up their faces on these cameras that aren't the best quality, colors really came into play. And they were able to play with makeup in a different way because they're on camera all the time. Now that we're coming out and people are starting to go back into the office, you'll see here that um, colors are still really popular. And it looks like it's going to be a trend that comes out of the pandemic and keeping up with the market. Yeah. And I noticed, I noticed natural did pop up more, but it's still colors are ahead. So that's interesting. So it's had a lasting effect. And so brand popularity. Now we said Mac was doing really well. If we look at some of these products over time. So for example, Mac, this is a year long time series that you did. Yes, exactly. So more recently, even though Mac is kind of hitting it out of the park, it might be actually riding on its coattails of popularity before the pandemic, possibly. For sure, for sure. And now if we look at, you know, you know, Mac is a really prevalent brand in this market. But as we look at smaller, um, smaller brands like Shiseido, for example, they're really starting to pick up some steam. And I think bigger brands really need to look out for the smaller, more niche brands that um, are marketing to these groups. Interesting. Marisol, thanks so much. I wish we had more time to go through all of the kind of what colors for which audience. Cool stuff. Thank you so much for, for taking uh, our audience through this. And for people in the audience, if you'd like more information, please write to us Tuesday at askpolly.ai. Join us next Tuesday for another episode where we go through another market research problem, completely different one, and we take you through the research and how to solve it. If you would like to be on our program or suggest a marketing problem that you have, also please let us know. Thanks everyone. Thank you for watching. If you like our podcast, please like us here and tell your friends. If you would like to be a guest on our program or bring your own market problems for Polly to solve, please send us an email at tuesday at askpolly.ai. See you next Tuesday.